Hey, what's going on y'all? I'm Ramble Gaming, the home of the gaming. And even though not many people talk about the game nowadays, New Super Luigi U is most certainly one of the best and hardest games out of the new Mario Bros. series. This game took a fresh new spin on New Super Mario Bros. U by throwing in harder twists into each level and only giving the player 100 seconds to beat them. Compared to many other 2D Mario games, the level designers went crazy with the creativity and difficulty of the courses in this one, especially in the later worlds. So today, since I recently finished the game a couple of months ago, I'm going to be ranking what I find to be the top 10 hardest levels in New Super Luigi U. And hey, by the way, around 93% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed to the channel, which means if you're a part of that 93%, you're missing out on a lot. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you can catch all of the top 10s and rankings that I upload in the future. With all that said y'all, let's get started. Let's go. First up on our list, at number 10 we have Wind Up Tower. This course is more janky than anything, and it's one of the few levels on this list where the 100 second timer is an actual threat. In order to climb this tower, you're required to spin on these screws to get stone blocks to slowly move out of the way or into the path that you're meant to take. The catch is, once you stop spinning and start jumping from block to block, those same blocks will slowly start to move back to where you won't be able to use them anymore. So if you fall down, you'll have to spin the same screw again to get these same blocks back in the right spots. Some of these jumps from one block to another are stupid hard, and failing the jumps eats a crazy number of seconds off the timer. The final third of this level is most certainly the hardest, as during this part, the blocks slowly close together together instead of slowly moving off screen once you activate the screw. That means if you mess up a jump or go a bit too slow in this section, you'll be crushed between the two walls resulting in an instant death. You'll definitely be needing a lot of patience and skill to be able to make it to the end and complete this difficult tower. Go. Motion controls, electricity currents, falling bob bombs, and rising lava? That's how you know that you're going to be in for a treat with current event number 9 on our list. With this course, the player is forced to ride a slowly moving metal platform that can only be controlled by tilting the controller left or right. However, this platform will stop dead and start slowly falling if any enemy, power up, or coin drops on top of it. The reason this is a problem is because there's also lava slowly rising from the bottom and bob bombs falling down from above, making for a quite a nasty challenge. If you continually tilt the controller so that the platform only moves right during the level, bomb bombs will constantly be dropping onto your platform, letting the lava ever get closer to you. On the other hand, if you take your time and wait for the bomb bombs to pass you, the lava will still continue to rise and get closer than before. It's a lose-lose situation. And during all of that craziness, you also have to avoid the electricity currents constantly moving across the level. Due to all these things being thrown at you, on top of your limited movement on the motion control platform, current event is for sure one of the hardest levels in New Super Luigi U. At number 8, we have Dancing Blocks Poison Swamp. The main challenge with this course comes from being able to time your jumps just right, as one wrong judgment will send you straight into the poisonous water down below. The first section of Dancing Blocks Poison Swamp is entirely composed of brick block platforms, each of which will fall into the acid and rise back up again every few seconds. With that in mind, you have to continually time your jumps and make them lengthy enough so that you're over a platform just as it's coming back up, as simply jumping from one platform to the next will lead to your death. This course ramps things up a notch in its second section, where instead of falling up and down, these platforms will now rotate in and out of the acid very quickly, leading to some really confusing patterns and sticky situations. If you're able to exactly memorize how these blocks pop up or pull off some crazy jumps at the start, then this level shouldn't be overly difficult for you. But for the players who don't have the memorization down, one small slip up or one small error here could lead to your instant demise. Let's go. Here at number 7, Parabatal Parade takes the spot. Precise platforming is very difficult in this game thanks to Luigi's slipperiness. But with this auto scrolling course, you're expected to make a crazy amount of precise jumps over a huge abyss of clouds, all while having to avoid giant bullet bills and trying not to accidentally fall off. Lots of fun! The only things here that you can platform off of 90% of the time are these parabeetal enemies that will either fall or rise when you step on them. You're expected to make some pretty reflexive jumps during this level, and the parabeetal Beetle's tendency to move up or down only makes jumping from one to another even harder. Plus, you'll have to deal with avoiding the piranha plants that are also just chilling on the pair beetles cause you know, sure! That just makes total sense. If you want to be able to finish this challenging level, you'll be needing a lot of concentration as well as situational awareness, as it's very easy to misjudge jumps or slip up and immediately fall to your death with this one. Let's go! 
You know what I hate? Underwater levels. I mean, who doesn't hate them, right? But you know what I hate even more than that? Underwater levels where you're given very little space to maneuver in and are constantly being chased by Dragon Eel after Dragon Eel for the entirety of the course. What fun, right? And in Dragon Eel Depths, number 6 on our list, that's exactly what you're required to do. Swim in very tight spaces, dodging many enemies and walls, all while Dragon Eels constantly spawn in and chase you down, usually more than one at a time. Dragon Eels are one of the few enemies that you can't kill in New Super Luigi U, and hitting them with Fire Flowers only makes them move faster. They'll move in patterns that make them hard to avoid, and if they miss you, they can easily just loop back around and continue the chase if you don't go fast enough. Going fast in this level, however, is very difficult, as thanks to your limited speed and movement in the water, trying to go quickly will usually get you killed. This whole entire level ends up being so difficult and annoying, as you have to avoid a crazy amount of enemies, many of which you can't kill, all while being cramped in an underwater area thanks to the tight sections and the many rotating stone blocks constantly getting in your way and pushing you around. For how early in the game this level is, it is surprisingly challenging, and more likely than not, you'll be spending a good amount of time trying to beat it. Let's go. And here at number 5, we have Spine Coaster Stowaways. I find this secret skull raft coaster level in Rock Candy Mines to be way harder than the one found in Superstar Road, and in general, one of the hardest levels in New Super Luigi U. Not only is this level longer than its counterpart in World 9, but it's much more challenging and intense in general. This whole course is basically a deathly roller coaster ride, except that instead of being safely strapped into the moving car, you're freely standing on top of it as it continually dips into the acid and runs through piranha plants. Not dangerous at all. The jumps that you'll need to make in order to even stay on the spine coaster are crazy, as this platform moves very fast almost all of the time and its momentum is also carried over to the player. And partway through the spine coaster track, it only gets even harder, as in addition to attacking with piranha plants from below the car, the course will place a piranha plant at each end of the spine coaster so now you only have half of the platform to work with. This makes mobility way more difficult, especially when the car then goes to take dip after dip after dip in the acid, as its mobility can easily slowly push the player into the piranha plants. You'll constantly have to be fighting the Spine Coaster's momentum in this course, which is pretty difficult to do. And the ending to this course is great as well. Oh, it's so amazing. It's, it's so fantastic. I mean, everyone loves it when the track ends by having the coaster take a sudden full plunge into the acid. If the player is in the air from a previous jump when this happens, they definitely won't be able to land on the coaster and jump off here before it's already submerged. New Super Luigi U doesn't have too many fast paced, yet extremely hard levels, but Spine Coaster Stowaways definitely falls under that category. Due to how insane, unique, and unpredictable it is, Spawn Coaster Stowaways is crazy difficult to beat. Let's go. Oh goodness gracious, here we go! At number 4 on our list, we have Magma River Cruise, an absolute mess of a level that's extremely chaotic and very difficult to beat. The main gimmick here is that the player has to ride a slowly moving raft over lava, all while a poison cloud of gas is also catching up to them. But don't think it's just that simple, oh definitely not so because this platform is another one of those types that will completely freeze in its tracks if enough enemies or coins are on it, just like the one used in the current event. The only difference here is that this raft at least allows up to 5 enemies or coins on it before it comes to a dead stop in the lava. That doesn't make this level as easy as you might think however, because unlike with the current event, this course has enemies fall on this raft like raindrops. Even if you are able to slowly get rid of the ones already on your raft, more will just continue to fall for the entirety of the level, and in addition to all of that, magmas will also to rise onto your raft from the lava below in groups and waves, making it insanely difficult to avoid them and avoid all of the falling enemies all while trying to kill off enough so that the raft can keep on moving. If that sounds very hard to you, that's because it is. The player has to do so much of this level and keep their eyes on so many things that it straight up can become overwhelming. There are situations here where you legitimately might not be able to avoid taking damage. That's how difficult and crazy Magma River Cruise really is. Let's go. Number 3, Impossible Pendulums. While this level isn't impossible, like it says in the name, it is bloody difficult to complete thanks to its incredibly precise jumps and tight structure. Literally, the first two screens of the level put you up against a fast swinging chain of spike pendulums, which you immediately start running under and jump at the perfect point if you don't want to get killed by them. No, but for real, this first jump is very precise. 
From then on, you have to deal with giant spike pendulums that defy the laws of gravity, as they'll swing back and forth in a pattern above their anchor point instead of below it. You're given such small platforms to jump on to avoid these huge s hex spike balls, and it's very likely that their giant hitbox will barely catch you as you're trying to jump to the patterns. This course takes a lot of persistence to get through, mainly due to how little space you have to avoid such giant obstacles. And if you want to get the top of the flagpole in this course, get ready for an even more precise jump than the very first one. Oh yeah, no, this course is brutally difficult. There's definitely no doubt about that. Let's go. At number 2 on our list, P-Switch Peril is an unnecessarily rough and tight speedrun course which throws tons of obstacles at the player. Even the most minor of slip ups or mistakes here can immediately cause you to fail and start over again. You'll be dying here a lot. A whole lot. Here, here, let me explain to you what's required of you for this level so that hopefully you can get a better understanding of why it's so difficult. So what you gotta do first here is jump on this P-Switch, then jump over the pillars while running falling blocks and duck under brick blocks to hit another P-Switch, then jump over gaps in the sky, then jump over tons of spinies, don't miss hitting that P-Switch or die instantly, then jump over more spinies, then make an undispected precise jump to avoid tons of water leaks that blend back around to finally reach the goal. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, that's because it is. Even the most simplest of mistakes, such as undershooting a P-Switch or not getting enough momentum on the slides, will instantly result in your death, because these falling blocks do not give any slack. You will fail here a lot during your first attempts, and even when you do know the full layout of the level, you'll still have to be on your A-game if you want to be able to take it down, much less collect all the three star coins. Despite how difficult it is, however, P-Switch Peril isn't quite the hardest level in New Super Luigi U. So let me now show y'all which one is. Let's go. And finally, at number one on our list, we have Fire Bar Sprint. Screw this level. It is stupid difficult. While it isn't a pure speedrun level, per se, it is very speed focused and very intense. Here, you're put up against a straight path of gigantic spinning fire bars that each have differing patterns and speed. These fire bars take up an insane amount of the screen, and one misjudgment, one wrong timing, or one wrong jump will send you face first into the fire. And these fire bars later in the level get insanely fast as well. Like, bro, just look at that, okay? Look how fast it's going. It's insane. If you immediately start running as soon as the level starts, you'll die. If you go a bit too late, you'll die. If you jump a bit too high, you'll die. If you jump a bit too low, you'll die. If your reflexes aren't even fast enough, you'll still die. In case you couldn't tell, even the littlest inconsistencies will cause you to die in this level. And most times you'll feel like it wasn't even your fault. Firebar Sprint is for sure the hardest level to complete in this game. And guess what? You have to complete it with a super mushroom or better in order to actually get the third star coin. Like what? Clearing the this level alone is already crazy enough, but doing it completely hitless if you don't have any items already on you is taking it up from brutal to a straight nightmare. Due to all these factors, Firebar Sprint is definitely, in my opinion, the hardest level period in New Super Luigi U. But let's be honest here, it doesn't even come close to half of the crap that people make in Super Mario Maker 2. Like bro, that is absolutely some sick crap. There's no way in like a thousand years I'd be able to pull off what some of these people do in Super Mario Maker 2. Like bro. <laughs> They got me impressed, and they have me scared at the same time. Well guys, there you have it. Those were the top 10 hardest levels in New Super Luigi U. Do you disagree with any of my placements? Let me know down below, and make sure to like this video and subscribe for the future ones to come. Here's some other top 10s on screen right now that you can watch as well. I think you'll like them. Anyways, with all that said y'all, I'll see y'all in the next video. Gamble Gaming, over now.